Hi, everyone, and welcome once again to one of our uh, virtual events. We have our CTC astronomer, Warren Hart. Man, all of a sudden, my brain turned off. And um, we are in partnership with Mayborn Science Theater over here on the CTC campus. And we are going to learn all about the June night sky. So welcome, Warren. How are you today? I'm doing great. And uh, glad to have everybody that's uh, coming on. We'll give you some information and give you uh, a tease to what if you come to the planetarium this Saturday. Uh, at 530, there will be more information that I can share with you then. But Sounds we're going to give you a bunch of information today to uh, get you interested in looking up in the sky. Yep. So, Cindy, let's go ahead and, and uh, get started. And initially, if you will show them our web, the web page and how to get to it. All right, well, this is the library webpage, and you find the study guide or the lib guide for astronomy here at Research Study Guides. Then go on down to Astronomy and Mayborn Science Theater, and that's where you're going to go ahead and find all the information, all the calendars, the maps, uh, astronomy books, databases, uh, just lots of different fun activities that um, Warren puts in there. You can also watch past shows of Warren, his night sky tours, and pretty much even the countdown for the eclipse is here. And so definitely get in the habit of coming to this page. Yes, indeed. Yep. All right. So you ready? So let's yes, yeah, start with the calendar and let's... Uh, let everybody see, and we want to look at the first page and the first partial week there on June the 1st. So, thank you, Cindy. And uh, let's see, how long is it going to be on June the 1st until we have our total solar eclipse? And what does it say there? Less than a hmm. year, 312 days. Less than a year. Yes, that's correct. And then also, I have put down there on the same date on Thursday, June the 1st, and you see in the blue, there is the link, if you will, to the astronomy resources uh, part of the page that Cindy just showed you. And if you would type that in in your search and then uh, enter, then you will go directly to it from there, and then you can have fun just exploring all of those different items that are that are included in the astronomy page for the library. Now, let's see on Friday, uh, there it's that we find that the planet Mars is less than one degree from what is called the Beehive Star Cluster in a, in a, uh, the cluster there is called M44. It's named after an astronomer uh, back in the 1700s, uh, Messier, and it's just the 44th item that he recorded in his logbook. He was looking for comets all the time, and this is barely uh, one year from when the telescope was, we'll say, invented by Galileo in uh, 1600s, the middle 1600s. So the technology is nothing in comparison to what we have today. So he was looking for what we would call a technical term, a smudge, in uh, like you would have. See, I grew up in uh, elementary and also middle school and and high school. We had this thing that's called a blackboard, and we used stuff that was called chalk, 
and we would go and write on that. And when we wanted to erase it, if we could find the eraser, we could do it. But if not, that you would use your sleeve, or if your friend was up there, use their sleeve to erase it, and you'd wind up with a smudge on that blackboard. So that's what it looks like here when you would look there for Mars, uh, the red planet, and it's so close to it, and then you would see this grouping, this cluster of these stars in uh, uh, there in the constellation, as you noticed in Cancer the Crab. So, and then we go on to Saturday of uh, June the third, and there is uh, the moon has moved and as there and it's one and a half degrees so holding your hand out in front of you at arm's length either hand whichever your predominant hand or the other and hold up your little little finger your little pinky and that is approximately one degree across it not lengthwise but across it so you can see that this red star Antares is just one and a half of your little finger away there, uh, the moon and that red star. So that'll give you an idea of where to find the constellation of Scorpius, the scorpion. And that's going to be important because we're going to get to it in a little while. And that's the predominant constellation for the summer and also here in June as it starts out for viewing it for, uh, all night. Now, uh, let's go on down to the first full week starting on the 4th. And there is uh, planet Venus at, hmm, what is that? Greatest eastern elongation does that mean that venus is stretched out or what no and it says it trails the sun well what i've done i have put in uh, made available each of these different planet positions that uh, is mentioned uh, in astronomy and so cindy has one the one here and let's click on that and that's called the greatest eastern elongation now, real quick here, you'll see and on that, there's the sun in the center, of course. The first few dots that goes around there are, and notice it's listed as the inferior or the inner planet's orbit. And that's how, back in astronomy, how the astronomers listed the different uh, planets. The planets that are closer to the sun than us, and that would be the planets Mercury and Venus. So uh, either one of those two, and in this case, it is uh, Venus. So there is a descriptive uh, little diagram you see on there that circle and facing the sun, the half of the planet that's visible to the sun is all in the daylight of the sun. And then the dark side is of course on the other side. Now, then the next line, next circle includes earth there. And I put on that our, our rotation on our north north pole south pole axis and looking down on the top we look down on the top of our solar system we're looking down <coughs> pardon me on the north pole of earth and we watch it and we see that it rotates counterclockwise well look at all of the planet orbits the inner earth and the outer or the other term is superior and that would be mars jupiter saturn and uranus and all of it everything rotates around the sun counter 
clockwise. Now, I also include, you see there as we would read, the greatest eastern elongation. In other words, that is the widest distance that you, we would be able to see the angle from the sun to Venus and that angle there. But also, if you can picture in your mind, as we rotate counterclockwise, we would see as we go, which one do we lose sight of first? Do we lose sight of the sun first for sunset? Or is it the planet Venus that we lose and we can't see first? Uh, well, if sun. you picture that, it is the sun. And so what I've mentioned on there then that Venus trails the sun. So what time of the day or night will be the best time to view Venus? Would that be prior to sunrise? No. Or will it be after sunset? After sunset. Very good. So it's going to be after, and that's why I say that in our view of where Venus happens to be, that it's going to trail the sun. So that evening, if we go back to the calendar, uh, therefore, Cindy, and look on that day, and we would see that on Sunday the 4th, I do mention to you that it's at that greater eastern elongation trailing the sun. So the viewing period is what? It's from tonight's sunset that evening at 8.32. And so from then on, as it gets darker, as you go through the different twilights until dark sky, then that's the best time to see Venus. And the next morning sunrise, uh, you will be able to see until the light of the sun will prevent you from following Venus anymore. Okay, I hope that is uh, that you understand what I've indicated and what we would see in the sky. Well, now, let's. That's also a, a new page that you added in yes. in the lib guide is planet locations. Right, so. and those are a total of eight of them. So there's the first three. There's the second three, and then there oh, I is think two totals. That's why yes. you've got more than eight. That's all right. So anyway, so as time goes on, then we will reference to whatever position that the, a planet, uh, either uh, Mercury, Venus, inner planet, or Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, outer planet, where it would be and help you to understand and figure out, will we be able to see it or not at all? So that's the whole purpose for you. Well, what do we have on Thursday, the 8th of June? I notice on, uh, in red, it is 10 months from that day to the total solar eclipse. So every month, when we come to the eighth day of that month, I will have on there how many months it is to go. Now, let's continue on. And we have on Friday the 9th that at 6 p.m., the moon is just under three degrees southeast of the planet Saturn. And we should see that then uh, later on uh, in the evening there. Let's look now if we uh, to Saturday the 10th. 
And we have, and I haven't mentioned the different positions of the moon and it's there in the afternoon at its third quarter position. And, but also that evening, notice I have there listed, it is number one of five and a half June constellations. Now, for those of you that have been with us when we talked back in May, you understand what uh, I'm saying when I say a half. For those who are just coming on and have not had that before, this is this is uh, this half. This is the constellation uh, that we're talking about uh, later on. But this is a full constellation, and this is Scorpius. And the astronomical name for that is Scorpius, and it is the scorpion. And it's viewing period, and this is the best night of the year to start to view it from beginning at sunset. And I include the time for sunset at the planetarium uh, here, 835 until tomorrow's sunrise. So uh, on that, let's go uh, there to the scorpion, if you would, Cindy. Thank you very much and scroll uh, there so we can see. And there it is with a listing of all those numbers of those black dots. Those are the different stars. And there's also, you see some circles with letters in them. And what in the world? Well, notice on the, there that the, on our screen, it says page one of two. Every constellation will have at least two pages. Some, because of certain reasons, may have three, and some will even have four. But what all this is showing us is the that lighter area uh, there uh, depicting the sky is the region in the sky that the professional astronomers back in the early 1930s decided what would be designated the region the the uh, uh, region in the sky for each constellation and so here is all the region in the sky for scorpius and there are the numbers. So let's go on down to page two, Cindy, and let's see what we have. Notice on here, I have for you at the very first, there are all of the items that are numbered and lettered for uh, so the scorpion. And so we have one, two, three, four, and you keep going, and you come on down six, seven, eight, and then a and B. Now, what's that? Well, those are not single stars. Notice A is an is M4. Remember, we talked that M stands for Messier, M-E-S-S-I-E-R. The Frenchman back in the 1700s was trying to find uh, comets, and there's the information. There's its address. There's how bright it is, its magnitude, uh, how far away is it, 7,200 light years, how large is it in diameter, it is 75.1 light years in diameter. Oh, wow. And it's called a globular cluster. See how technical professional astronomers uh, mentioned that? It's a glob. Okay, a cluster of stars. And then the next one, B, is a little uh, maybe unfamiliar, but that starts with the capital letter C. And this is a professional astronomer who uh, lived in the southern hemisphere here. And in uh, 1900s and currently, he, his name is Caldwell. And so he did similar to, uh, to Messier, 
but he uh, went for looking for other things rather than just com uh, comets. And so this is C75, that's his 75th item on, her, on his logbook, and you can see that uh, on there. Look at number nine. Number nine is Antares, Alpha Scorpii. And there's its address. There is its, how bright is it, magnitude, 1.07. And it happens to be the 16th brightest star in the night sky that we have there. And also, how far away is it? 550 years, a light, uh, years uh, away from us, light years. Well, if you subtract 550 from currently in 2023, you find it's 1473. So, when you go outside and you see this bright red star Antares, those photons that, are, that you can see with your eye, that they come into the back end of your eye, register on the uh, uh, rods in the back of your eye, which is then transmitted via the central nervous system to your brain, and you see those, those took 550 years to get here. So, and then Antares is a term of uh, anti and Aries, meaning it is the rival of Mars. Hmm, why would we say the rival of Mars? Now, I didn't put on here or anything about it, but when you look at Antares, it is a giant red star. What do we say about the planet Mars? It's a red planet. The red planet. And Mars, as a planet, will move along the path of what we call the ecliptic of the sun and the other planets and the moon. And at certain times throughout the years that it will come, if you will, alongside uh, Antares itself. And so there, the star of Antares and the planet Mars, both of them red. So this is the rival there. And then all the rest as we go on down. So if you'll scroll on down on this page for us, Cindy. Yeah, I'll keep going. There's the list of all of the items, all 20 stars and the five different item, uh, other things that we have. I include also what is called an asterism, A-S-T-E-R-I-S-M. -S. And it's the name of something in the sky, someone centuries ago, looked up in the sky and said, hey, all those stars, they look to me like a fish hook. And so that name has stayed all along. And all that means it is the name that somebody has given to uh, some kind of combination of stars in the sky, which is not the name of any of the 88 constellations that are in the sky. That's all that means. Then if you get interested and you want to print out the page, which you're uh, welcome to do, they're all free and they're in a PDF format and you print out this one here for, uh, uh, <clears throat> for the scorpion, excuse me, and the second page there, you can also, and if we want to, uh, before we go on, there I have interesting information about Antares, one of the four royal stars. And then the very the bottom there, if for anybody to view all of the constellation, you must be either at or between those two uh, latitudes that are there 
to be able to see all of it. And you look and you will notice we are in within that uh, latitude so we can see all of Scorpius. So let's scroll back up, if you would, please, to the first page. Now, and then back out a little bit so we can see the full page of it. While I'm doing that, I have a question. Sure. Um, you mentioned light years and you mentioned it as years, like yes. it, it's that many years. How is that even measured? Like, because every new day is a different, <laughs> it makes it bigger every new day or what? Yeah. No, it's not bigger. It is based on what we understand is the speed of light and that is constant throughout the universe as far as we know. Well, well, let's see, what was it used to be? 186, 187,000, blah, 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 uh, miles per hour, per, no, miles per second, excuse me. You would take that and from the distance that the astronomers are able to perceive how far away in distance that the star or whatever happens to be, then they convert that distance in miles, kilometers, whatever you want, and they come up with how many days, years, it takes and a light year is a distance. How far does light travel in space in the vacuum in one calendar year? 365 and a quarter days. Okay. All okay. right. Well, great. Thank you. Okay. Now look at the scorpion, the white area, and look just above it, and you see a constellation named. Ophiuchus. Now look over to the right of it, and down in front of it is Libra or Libra. Going down is Lupus, the wolf. Go down toward the uh, southeast part of it, there's Norma, and then there's Ara, and then coming on up, Corona Australis, and then Sagittarius. Okay, now let's scroll down to the second page again, keep going. Okay, hold on, right there. See the, sec the, the other item right below asterisms, the bordering constellations. So you decide that you are going to print out the page for the scorpion and you get interested in that and you wanna learn more in the sky. Well, I have given to you then as you see, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven constellations that border the scorpion. So you can choose either one or all of them or whatever. Go to them on the library web page that lists all the constellations. Pull that up, and you're going to get the same thing. You're going to get the diagram. You're going to get the listing of the stars and all like that. And so you can slowly begin to learn a greater area in the sky as you go uh, along in your interest. And go at your own speed. There is no requirement that you have to learn or go through X number every night of the year. No, you go, and if it's only two other constellations and you have a total of three and you say enough, that's fine. That's enough. You do it so that you are comfortable and what you enjoy doing and how much you want to get involved in learning a certain area of the sky. That's all that means there. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. So that is the scorpion there. Now, the also we have on Antares, I had looked up there, and it is in 
in its size, Antares is 492 diameters larger than our sun. Now, I had at one time, <clears throat> and I haven't come across where I've put it, but I had figured up that we could put in to this uh, the planet, uh, planet, to the star Antares, a few million, close to some maybe billion suns inside of it. Antares is a biggie. And it will be the second largest star you will see, and I'm going to say in your lifetime, until we get something else, uh, a nova that expands uh, some star or a brand new star that's created for us. Uh, in the wintertime, it is Betelgeuse in the constellation of Orion. So those are your two big reference uh, constellations. When you find and uh, are able to recognize in the sky for the summer, the scorpion, then that gives you the whole uh, spring, summer, early fall time period to really become familiar with that part of the sky. And then late fall, winter, early spring, then you're going to switch over to Orion, and that is Betelgeuse, because Antares, like right now, Orion for us, is either way early, early in the morning, or it may be up during daytime, which does us no good. Okay, all right, let's look at our calendar. We've done, we've looked at the first full week. Let's look now 11 through 17. And we have on the 11th there at 626 is our earliest sunrise for the year of 20. 23. And then on Tuesday the 13th, uh, another little info piece of information, we will be at 300 days till a total solar eclipse. So on the 14th, it's now in the 200s, 299 days to go. And then uh, notice on Wednesday the 14th, the moon has traveled and at one o'clock in the morning, it's just barely uh, less than one and a half degrees from the big planet Jupiter, and you would see that in the sky. And then we go on to Friday the 16th, the moon keeps moving, and there it is four degrees from the planet Mercury. Well, let's go to Saturday the 17th. On Saturday the 17th, there we have the moon and its new location which we know it's there, but we can't see it because we're looking at the dark side of the moon. Uh, it's in between us and the sun. But we do have our second constellation, and that is Ophiuchus, the serpent wrestler. And there's the time, and Cindy has ready, and she's going to bring up for us, and there is Ophiuchus. All right. And we see uh, the information for that. Notice that what it does, it is listed as an equatorial and an ecliptical constellation. Do you see that? First of all, looking down at the feet of Ophiuchus, you see the blue dashed line and that is the ecliptic, the path of the sun, the moon, and the planets. And so that ecliptic path it goes through the area reg uh, relegated to Ophiuchus, go up to the shoulders, upper chest area of Ophiuchus, and in the brown dash, there is the equator. So. I just list there and give people understanding of re relation to where I would look for it. It is both, and then alphabetically, it would be an ecliptical and an equatorial constellation. And there's some, of course, that are neither, neither one. 
and some are one or the other. And then here are a few that are both. So there's Ophiuchus. And if you look, you see to the right side of there, it says Serpens Caput, C-A-P-U-T. And that is in Latin. And by the way, all of the names of the constellations, all 88, are in Latin, the names. Serpens Caput, we looked at that last month for May, and that means and caput is head. And so in Latin, we would, in English, we would say serpent's caput is the head of the serpent. Oh, but that was last month. And here we are coming up in June and look to the left and down a little bit. And you see serpent's cauda, C-A-U-D-A. -A. Well, we've got the head. What would be cauda? Hmm. What would you think would be the name for the serpent here? What part of the serpent? We've got its head. So what's the cauda? Body. The tail. Tail. Serpent's cauda. The, the tail. Tail of the serpent. And by the way, we will get it in a little bit anyway, but Serpens is the only constellation in the sky that has been divided into two separate regions. So a trick question and a little thing to show how knowledgeable you are, there are 88 constellations in the entire sky and each constellation has its own designated region, area, spherical area in the sky. So you ask somebody, well, if there's 88 constellations and each one has its own thing, how many Dren regions are there in the sky? And they'll say, well, well, 88. And you say, wrong. No, why? Because serpents has been divided into two. And so it's actually 88 constellations, yes, but 89 separate areas. Little trick question or statement if you want. And you notice also at the feet of Ophiuchus, we have there the blue ecliptic line. And then over in Sagittarius region, there is a circle that I've put with yellow and the S, and that is, notice there, that's the sun at the winter solstice, December the 21st of each year. And that is where we would find it. Okay, so that's, uh, we have here is Ophiuchus. Let's go back to the calendar so we can move on. And uh, we have, now, uh, in Ophiuchus, we come on, and the third the week here on the 19th, there is again, uh, the moon is traveling across, and it's uh, close to the star Castor in the ecliptical constellation of Gemini, the twins. We're going to get that in just a little bit, but not quite yet. Now, we have then our third uh, constellation for us. We had, first of all, the Scorpion. Second, we had Ophiuchus. The third here is the constellation of Ara, the altar. And so let's see on Ara, the altar. And there it is, Ara, the altar. And there's a whole bunch of stars and there's some letters and things like that. And we got something relatively new for us. Look down in the bottom third uh, of the constellation area, and you see it says the planet CTC Planetarium's Southern Horizon. So that dashed line from there on down toward the South Pole, you will never see if you don't ever go further south 
understand the planetarium here. And look at, if you will, then the bottom right hand corner of Ara the altar, and you see a small dot with the number three and a larger black dot for number four. What does that mean? You will be able to see number three, but it is so close, but more than likely, you will not see number four. And definitely, we won't see number 14. So that's what this has. Also, all the names of the constellations surrounding it, we do that, what we talked about, and you can continue to improve or get your uh, awareness of the sky. Here is where we have now three pages. So here's the first page. Now scroll to the second page, Cindy. Go ahead and scroll up, if you will, to the second page. I'm on the second page. Okay, now we got it. Does anybody know anything different? Everything looks the same, except I took off. No, go back to the second page. I took off. There, what's in the first page is our southern horizon. And now, here's one that does not have the horizon. So I do that whenever we have uh, either the, uh, for the southern horizon, in case someone is uh, looking at this and copying that, and they are not at here in Texas at where we are in latitude, and so they don't have all of that other part that they they are not interested in because they can't do that. So here it is in, in its full generic uh, uh, picture, if you would. And then we scroll on down, and there's the third page with all the information. And if you'll go there, and you'll see very similar, the whole thing that we have, and there's the names of the stars and the different objects that are available. There's our bordering constellations and then the region that we have to be uh, able to see all of, of Ara. And we have, to, we have to be at least 22 uh, and a half degrees and 19 minutes north so that we can see all of Aura. But we're at 31 degrees north, so we cannot see all of Aura. 22 degrees to 31 degrees would be nine degrees. So if we scroll all the way back up now, Cindy, let's go all the way back up to first page. We can see, there you go, we can see all of Aura except the lower nine degrees of Aura. And that's what it is indicating for us here. Okay, on the same night, let's go to the calendar. On the same night that we have Aura on there, you will see now also the same night we would look to the north and our fourth constellation is Hercules the hero. So let's go and let's take quickly at he at Hercules. There he is. And the same information. Let me take uh, for specifically, I want you to look at the diagram and look at his head, if you will. And we would start with, and let's start up at the upper right hand corner of his head and that would be star number eight we go down and there is um, an object there a we go down to star number seven we go over to number nine and we go up to number 11. so those four stars outline his head but it looks like something else we could actually call it and we can Let's scroll down to the second page, 
and we're going to look in asterisms. Now, there's all of the list that we have there. And then go down, scroll down, and let's look at asterisms. Well, there's the butterfly, okay? But there's also something called the keystone. And who knows and can tell us what a keystone is? If you know, text it and let's find out who knows what a keystone is. Okay, so there we go. Let's go back up to the first page and let's see. There is the item uh, 87911. That's the keystone. And some say also butterfly, so maybe you can make something out of that, whatever. All right, in time wise, let's continue on. Let's go back to the calendar. And we go uh, there on Wednesday the 21st is our next presentation, our WebEx, what we're doing right now. And we will look at July's constellations and activities and there's eight constellations in july notice at 9 57 that evening the 21st is something called the summer solstice okay and that is when the sun is the furthest north of the equator for the year so that means the season spring ends and the season summer begins and cindy has for us a page that will give us an understanding of this summer solstice and we're going to start first of all with the constellation of taurus the bull i believe is what you have next so let's go to that and there it is and you notice over on the far left there it is the path of the ecliptic there's our sun and that's where the sun is on that night uh, of the summer solstice and it happens to be at the borderline between taurus and the next constellation cindy gemini and let's look at gemini real quick and there is gemini Pardon me, just to see, let you see, and there is a little better uh, to see the ecliptic. Notice it barely is coming up, and that's the highest point for it, and then it starts seemingly going back down again. Solstice, 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 Latin word, two words. What would you say sol, S-O-L means? Sun. Sun, correct. Now, stice, S-T-I-C-E, is a little more difficult, you know. All that means is it's something when it stands still. So, long time ago, centuries ago, and the, the astronomers and people will kept track of how high in the sky did the sun seem to rise each time it was due south, we would say at high noon for them, and they would mark it, and it would keep going up higher as we were in May and into June, and it kept going higher and higher, but it began to slow down until June the 21st, it seemed to stop. The sun stood still. And that's the farthest north the sun will be in the night, in the day sky that we would see of how high in the sky it will be. And then as we have spring has ended, summer has begun in Gemini, if you will, and it goes on until we get to another point for us and along the path of the ecliptic. Okay, let's go back to our page, our calendar page, and let's press on here. We had the solstice. There's our moon uh, in one of its positions. Uh, how far away is it and how close is it? 
look on Saturday the 24th. Saturday the 24th, the last Saturday of the month, which this coming Saturday for us on the 28th is, uh, or 27th, excuse me, is our time that if you come over to the planetarium this coming Saturday evening, 5.30 to 6.30, and maybe I'll jabber on a little further because I ask questions and people also ask questions. So sometimes we go a little longer than 6.30. But what I'll be doing this coming Saturday, we'll be talking about this calendar, these constellations, and the uh, the things that uh, happen in the sky, and I can do things in the planetarium and show you relationships I cannot show you here. So if you're interested, come on and see that. And the same thing, there is going to be July's calendar of the eight constellations. Let's look at our last week. On Monday the 26th, we are going to have our fifth constellation called Draco the Dragon. So Cindy will bring that up for us. There it is. It's a far north one. And notice we have a new circle we haven't had before. And there it says the lower limit of CTC planetarium's circumpolar region. Okay. Look at the word circumpolar. Circum would be circumference. All right. And polar, of course, means in relation to one of the poles. In this case, it's the North Pole. What this means is that dashed line that's there, will, we will be able to see everything there. Notice there at the top, there's star number five, six, seven. And way over to the head of the dragon, there's nine, 10, 13, 14. Okay, now we're going to see those. We can, but five and just at the touch of six, but we'll say five and seven and all the rest as you go toward the North Pole, you can see every night of the year. And in a way, that is our northern horizon of being able to see when you look to the north throughout the year. And so the, our northern horizon is uh, permanent, we'll say that. So everything that is in above your northern horizon, you can see throughout the year. So the rest of, of uh, Draco the Dragon, we can see all year, all of those others. Now, I want to bring out for you a specific star. And if I'm looking correctly here, it should be number four. So Cindy, let's scroll down to the second page and let's see if I got the right one. Ah, I did. Wow. Okay. Number four, Thuban, T-H-U-B-A-N, the dragon's tail. There's its address and all the information, but now read this. Thuban was the northern pole star, or let's say that in Latin, Polaris, approximately 5,000 years ago when the Egyptians built the pyramids around 3,000 to 2,800 B.C. Because of precession, Okay, the astronomers cannot let people go along. They have to come up with these new words. We found out, they found out centuries ago, that the Earth is like a giant top. And if any of you have ever played with a top or your children play with a top, as it spins, what happens when it begins to slow down? What does it do? Or it what? It wobbles. It wobbles. Well, we can't, they couldn't say wobble. I mean, everybody would understand that. So they're going to come up with a different word, precession. And Polaris now is our northern pole star. So 
the precession circle is one time around, and we are on that path of precession. But one time around is about 26 to 27,000 years. So we have only gone in this time period here about 5,000 of 26, 27,000. So one fifth of the dis the uh, going around that circle in that period of time. So. Polaris was, uh, at that time, back then, was the star Thuban. Interesting. And you can see it. It's very, you can pick it out in the sky real easy. And I will demonstrate Saturday evening in the constellation how to find Thuban in relation to some other constellations. And it's real easy. But I cannot do that with you here. Okay. Let's go back to the calendar. Draco was our fifth one. And we say we have five and a half. And that's on the last day of June. And our five and a half constellation is Serpent's Kaida, the tail. And so let's bring that up, Cindy. There it is. And notice in relation. Notice there as it begins. It's up in what constellation? Ophiuchus. Remember, we talked about that, Ophiuchus. <clears throat> and here is the, the stars uh, for the tail of the serpent right there. So serpent's cauda is Latin for tail of the serpent. And the other one is caput. And that's easy to remember alphabetically, C-A-P, and then here is C-A-U. And so that's easy to remember between the two. And there we have it in relation to the larger constellation of Ophiuchus. And I will point both of those out, all three of them, uh, Caput, Ophiuchus, and Cauda, uh, Saturday evening in, in the planetarium. So let's uh, go on back to the calendar. And there's nothing outstanding on July the 1st other than July. And we're down to 282 days as we keep progressing toward our, our uh, total solar eclipse. Well, has uh, anybody uh, written anything in on their chat. Alyssa, if you're there, she may have, she had to go do something else real quick. If you have written something in the comments, we'll get it to, um, to Warren and then he can go ahead and answer it that way. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Cindy, I want to thank you for going through and helping with all the different uh, pictures that we have. And now uh, just wrap it up for us there with what you want to talk about in our library events. Okay, well, I just want to remind everybody that you can actually find this on our um, library page. And we have, again, this is our new night sky tour dates. So make sure that you check this out. We also, the next event that we're gonna be having is called a Campus Bowl. And that's kind of our fun time for CTC faculty and staff that um, have a competition on who knows more stuff. And that'll be here on Facebook as well. And you can go ahead and watch the, uh, the competition and it's a lot of fun. So, um, and I just want to point out something. We have something really cool that Warren's going to be doing for us next September is he's going to be doing an event called a round trip to Mars. So did you get the rocket and all ready for us? Um, looking, looking good there, Cindy. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I also, when we get to that September date, 
I will give my opinion of why I don't think I will see probably the trip to Mars in my lifetime, because there are a minimum of four essentials that you must take with you when you're going to be on that crew that goes to Mars round trip, that means come back. <laughs> yeah, they can just go to Mars. They just can't come back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that should be that should be an exciting event that we have. Yes, I'm right. Looking forward to it. And I can mention that also uh, Saturday evening, and we can emphasize that each month as we get closer to September. Sounds good. We have a lot okay, of things. Okay, I'll turn it back over to you, Cindy. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I saw that Alyssa said we have no questions at this time. Um, if ever you do have questions, you can always put it in our comments and we will get it over to Warren so he can That's answer sweet. you directly. So um, all right. Well, once again, you've just made us made the sky just an amazing, fascinating thing. We need to continue to look up. And yes, you can see them even in the lights of Colleen. So start looking up, guys. I mean, so, that's right, for sure. Yep. Yep. Thank you All for right. coming. What's coming? No, I was going to say thank you to everybody for your coming to the presentation today. And look yep. forward to seeing you uh, in virtual life, but not virtual, but true life uh, this coming Saturday. Yes, yes. And um, you can come and meet the famous uh, CTC astronomer Warren Hart. <laughs> He's, as his wife says, don't give him a big head, but he needs there you to. Go. <laughs> and she makes sure I don't. <laughs> you see, you see right here and then they're over here. And switch okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you have a great day, Warren. And you thank too. you so much. Alyssa, thank you for streaming it. And you guys, y'all, I just enjoy the rest of your day. So, bye. We'll see ya.